Case 20. We have a small punch biopsy and you kind of get the sense of a busy dermis up in kind of the superficial um, aspect of the dermis. Just some increased cellularity and maybe maybe a little blood. And yeah, a little blood. You can start to see some uh, slit-like vessels up top or what look like some potential like slit-like spaces and then maybe some spindled cells kind of interstitially. Yes. So that, yeah, and then, yeah, on higher power, you can really see that there's actually a lot of slit-like vessels containing um, erythrocytes. So not really the morphology of angiosarcoma, but kind of would keep that on the differential, but this would be good for Kaposi's. Very good. This is nice Kaposi sarcoma, um, probably the patch stage, or maybe starting to get into the plaque stage clinically. I think it's labeled in the, the answer key as patch stage Kaposi. Uh, but, you know, there's a kind of a spectrum there of changes. But the, the, this one at least already has a, a significant obvious alteration. The dermis does not look normal. Like for this patient, their normal dermis is more or less down here. And this is way more dense collagen more cellular, more hemorrhage. There's something going on in the upper part of the dermis that's not normal. So that sometimes is the, the main clue we get. But in very, very early capacity, the earliest patch stage can be extremely subtle and not have much of the sclerosis. And, and those can be really easy to miss. So this one I think is more obvious. We know something's going on here. And once you look closer and know to think about capacity, it becomes pretty easy to make the diagnosis. Uh, I think one problem is we always learn slit-like spaces and blood. But we have a problem here is there's, there's slit or cleft like spaces between the collagen bundles here. That's just like that artifactual splits that we see between uh, the collagen bundles and the normal dermis. So it's kind of a, a cracking artifact almost. But then here, what we're looking for is the slit like spaces are these, the ones that are lined by endothelial cells. So there's little spaces in between these spindle cells and the spindle cells are trickling out between the dermal collagen bundles, sometimes wrapping around them. And like you said, we could always think, could there be angiosarc that's subtle also? But here, what we're looking at doesn't look very atypical. Most of the time, angiosarc has a lot of atypia and Kaposi sarcoma doesn't have much. There are exceptions in both directions, but still, I agree on, on a test and also in real life, I would be much more in favor of this being Kaposi sarcoma. And we have the, the slit-like spaces with blood. And then also in some areas, the cross sections showing that sieve like pattern that Mark Edgar taught me about the little holes that are round and the cells look more round the nuclei rather than spindle because we're getting a little small fascicle that's starting to form and is coming out of the screen at us and cut in cross section. So um, this could get confused a little bit with stasis. Uh, stasis can look a little like this. So the key, I think, is seeing the blood in the cracks, which are lined by endothelial spindle cells trickling into the, the spaces. So these are not well-formed vascular channels. They're kind of immature, primitive uh, vascular channels. And if you do endothelial markers, you can tell that all these spindle cells that look a lot like fibroblasts are actually endothelial. And that's where that can also help you say you don't have HHV8 readily available. And you're between is this severe stasis acroangiodermatitis, which with a lot of hemorrhage and spindled scar-like background, or is this true capacity? One thing you can do is to do a marker like CD34 um, and C uh, or ERG. CD31, actually, this is one context where 31 doesn't work quite as well because the HHV8 virus tends to downregulate the CD31 molecule. And so CD31 can be diminished or even false negative in capacity sarcoma, which I thought was really interesting. Um, uh, Liron Pintanowicz and uh, a colleague described that in the literature some years back, and I thought that was a useful clue. I, I don't honestly d usually do vascular markers here. I just go straight to HHV8. So I am not as familiar actually with seeing those nuances because thankfully we have HHV8 stain available now. In the past, people had to go really on morphology before the HHV8 stain was developed, um, uh, which was a much more problematic situation. But anyway, um, what you'll see though is that the spindle cells in the background of stasis are fibroblasts. They are not actually infiltrating spindled endothelial cells. So they'll be negative for um, endothelial markers, whereas here, these will all be positive. A couple other clues. Um, in, a, in addition to blood, there's often hemocytorin. And then also, we often have plasma cells. Plasma cells are really common uh, around Kaposi sarcoma for some reason. Now, that's not totally specific. In people with chronic lymphedema, they also often have a lot of plasma cells. For some reason, plasma cells like to hang out in the setting of lymphedema. And particularly in people that get the conventional or the classic form of Kaposi, the older people with older adults with lower extremity Kaposi, guess what? 
Older adults sometimes have lymphedema and particularly Kaposi sarcoma tends to have background chronic lymphedema changes. I don't know which one causes which or if they coexist for some other reason. Sometimes uh, chronic lymphedema can have, uh, there's a thought that in areas of chronic lymphedema, because you don't have good lymphatic flow to the lymph nodes, that area kind of forms a regional immunosuppressed area. So it may be that the chronic lymphedema is causing less immune surveillance of that area. And accordingly, the HHV8 virus can run amok there. And that's potentially why the Kaposi sarcoma starts showing up in the lower extremity more than elsewhere in older adults. Um, you know, it may be that they have systemic decreased immunity, but also it may be that they have regional decrease because of lymphedema. So it's a really interesting question, but I think it is important because people with lymphedema tend to get abnormal looking skin, and then it can be hard to sort out what's just lymphedema changes and what's actual uh, Kaposi sarcoma, and sometimes you have both hand in hand. So anyway, just be aware of that, that they, they often do coexist. And I think I saw it over here on the other slide. We published um, uh, Joseph McMichael and, and myself and Ben Stoff, one of my other mentors at Emory, and some of our colleagues um, from Afghanistan and some of our residents here in the U.S. We collaborated together and did a, a series of cases of Kaposi sarcoma from uh, Afghanistan. Uh, and, and some of those patients, the, most of them were the classic type in older adults, and some of them did have pretty dramatic background lymphedema type changes. So we published that a couple of years ago. It was a real great honor to, to collaborate with our colleagues uh, in Afghanistan who do an incredibly difficult job without the benefit of immunostains or subspecialization um, and do great care for the people of that country. So um, true honor to work with, uh, with them. All right, here's some more of those, um, those spaces. I wanted to show you over here one thing. This is not the best example, but there's a little bit of a promontory sign here, uh, a vessel kind of pushing into and protruding into the lumen of another vessel. So vessel within a vessel growth, uh, oh, you can kind of see it here. It forms like a promontory or a little mound or a hill inside the vessel. Sometimes those are like pre-existing dermal vessels that are normal, getting wrapped around by a thinner uh, dilated slit-like capacity vessel. Um, and so that's a, uh, a feature that's often talked about, but I would say that I only see good promontory sign in a small subset of cases of Kaposi. So it's great when you see it, but don't count on that to make the diagnosis. Many cases will not have it or will not have a well-formed uh, promontory sign. But really good to like just train your brain. When you see trickling little spaces or small vessels that are not organized, that are trickling into the dermis with hemorrhage and blood between them, think of Kaposi. If there's any doubt, go do stains for it. Um, and... Uh, that last thing that I was thinking before I got distracted was to see, nope, I think this one's not progressed far enough. When eventually, once they grow uh, kind of more towards plaque stage, they get down deeper into the dermis and they will begin, those, those little slit-like vessels will infiltrate and crush the eccrine coils. I don't know why, but for some reason they seem to love to grow into the space between the eccrine sweat glands and to squeeze them and, and fill up that space. So you'll see spindle cells and blood and hemosiderin and, and, and atrophic looking eccrine coils. And I find that really helpful for a diagnosis of Kaposi sarcoma. We don't have that here. It's, not, it's kind of too early for that here. I've got a nice example on Kiko uh, that has a promontory, nice promontory sign and nice crushing um, infiltration of the eccrine coil. Oh, maybe, maybe here? That is Kaposi here, but I don't think it's around the uh, eccrine coils yet. Oh, well. Anyway, you can go look up that one on Kiko. It's a nice example.